This is Bill from Curious Cars on a, you know, it's a pretty reasonably cool Florida Thursday morning. It's fine. It's like maybe the mid-60s. It could be a lot worse. So we're going to jump right into this thing, and I'm not going to moan too much. But we're going to take off. So look, here I am in Peter's driveway. Uh, it's where I like to do videos. I used to get attacked by goats here until I had them killed. I do hear some birds, but otherwise animal activity has been at a minimum. I haven't even really seen any of those uh, vicious looking deer on the way in. It's just been very quiet animal wise. And that's absolutely fine with me. I have absolutely no issue with that whatsoever. Uh, because as you know, I just don't trust the animal kingdom for a wide variety of reasons. I mean, birds can swoop down, they can peck your eyes out. Uh, you know, how do you know? How do you know they won't? What do they have to lose? Absolutely nothing. So, you know, we keep an eye on them. We keep an eye on anything that might be lurking around. Rabbits, armadillos, any number of things that could, you know, leap up and give you problems. But I have to say, for the moment, it's been pretty quiet, and that's just fine. So, uh, I'll give you a quick update on the weather. Again, this one's dedicated to Jill in San Diego. Uh, like I said, it's mild right now. We've had decent weather for the last few days. It's gotten hot in the middle of the day, of course. Uh, you know, winter is officially over. Spring is here. And for southern Florida, that means heat is here. So, uh, it's sunny, tropical, and miserable by 2 o'clock but at least we're still getting some fairly decent mornings. Uh, I'll give you a quick auction update. If you remember, I brought 10 cars to that premier auction. I kept plugging it on the site, hoping someone would go bid on it. Obviously, they didn't. But uh, I kept hoping anyway. And, you know, I did have mixed results. I mean, you know, we sold like seven of them that did, yeah... Three did pretty good, four did kind of shitty, and then three didn't sell at all. And uh, it's enough to keep going, but not exactly enough to make me overjoyed. So I don't know why the hell I started doing this instead of doing that RV trip that I, I, I blame Al for that. My friend Al, oh, come over. I bought these buildings. We'll make a shop. We'll have fun. Yeah, well, I did. And then Al vanished. And there I am, you know, flinging money at the stupid shop. I could be at a campsite in Tennessee reviewing a DeLorean. And instead, here I am still plugging away in Naples like an idiot. So anyway, uh, we took the RV, or at least I took it up there. I found an Airbnb RV pad, which was fine, uh, other than it had this, you know, the five million candle power nightlight, which shined in the back windows and made it kind of hard to sleep, but otherwise it was fine. The RV did okay. It sprung a couple of leaks. Uh, what I thought was an AC drip, in fact, was a water, you know, internal water drip, so I got to figure that out. And then when I backed the RV back in my driveway, coming home, home I smashed it up against a tree and now the AC is leaking when it rains so I've got to figure that shit out but eh, one of these days I'll get that RV dialed in I'll put together enough money again to go off on my trip and you know the hell with everybody else absolutely the hell with everybody else I got knee walking drunk at the auction uh, I'm not going to deny it I took a flask with me and then when I signed up for the auction they gave me a shitload of these drink cards because I Obviously, auctions want you very drunk when you're there. Yeah, which worked on me because I ended up buying a Pinto. And I mean, I, you know, look, I've talked about buying cars drunk before, but I have never been this drunk when I bought one. I mean, not even close. I mean, I can't even believe I could form a sentence. And I paid too much for it, but I loved it. I love it. I'll put a picture of it up now. I'd already put it on Twitter. You know, if any of you guys want to see what's coming up, I do kind of stick some shit up in Twitter from time to time. Not much, but some. And and, uh, this Pinto was up there. So I bought this thing. It's absolutely insane. You know, it's not the modest, quiet, daily driver that 
I kind of wanted to have, but I, I ended up with it. It reminded me of being a kid because when I was very young, there was a Hot Wheels called the Poison Pinto, and uh, it was one of my favorites. And when I saw this thing, looking all 70s and jacked up and, you know, pipes coming out, I thought, man, I have to have it. It'll make a good YouTube video at a minimum. And uh, it doesn't matter that it doesn't have a title or it's not street legal or has only one seat or yeah you kind of think about all these things after the next day when you've sobered up but uh, anyway we're going to do something with that Pinto I might try and do a little quick video on it tomorrow uh, just to show you what I got and what we're going to do with it Coronavirus whiskey is in full effect. Uh, Chris, a friend of mine, worst human being on earth, honestly. I mean, he's a great friend, but there is no question he is the worst human I know. Uh, he was hospitalized. Uh, he had blood pressure of like, you know, 290 over 220 or something. Most other people would be dead, uh, but Chris survived. He also had the coronavirus. So, uh, and you know, we're there sharing time at the auction. He's hanging around. He's breathing on us. We didn't know. Uh, he blames it on dehydration. I mean, obviously, it has nothing to do with all the deep fried butter sandwiches with the side of butter uh, and all the vodka cranberries he drinks. That that is not, You could cut Chris's aorta open and you'd find like a, a fried cheese curd. But, you know, no, it didn't have anything to do with that. It was just pure dehydration. And that's why his blood pressure was through the roof. And uh, now he's, you know, ordered some Pedialyte or Brondo or whatever it is. You know, it's what the body craves. It's what plants crave. And uh, he's going to be fine with that. So, yeah, God bless Chris. Uh, my At home... Uh, Apparently, there's some parrots hanging around the house, and my lady friend is absolutely insane. She wants to capture them on film. So she's running around the front yard and the neighbor's houses like some kind of peeping Tom, holding a camera with a telephoto lens and binoculars, trying to get a glimpse and a shot of these parrots while the you know neighbors are kind of freaking out, wondering what this woman is up to. Uh, and that's, again, you know... Perry, yeah, they're attractive looking, but they screech like like a busted chainsaw. They're the worst things to have in your neighborhood, but she's excited, and honestly, when she's distracted and off on a tangent like that, I just leave her alone, because otherwise she's just going to try to find ways to annoy the shit out of me and decide, you know, what it is that I should be doing, how I failed her, how I'm a disappointment, or uh, many other things. So if she's off on her parrot quest, and then, yeah, that's fine with me. And uh, let's just dive right into this car. And this is the IROC project that I talked about. Now, this is not going to be a completely normal video. This is not going to be a review. Uh, this is more or less just an update on this car that, you know, I've owned now for probably a year and a half, and only now has it just become drivable. And we'll get into how that happened and where it's going and why. Uh, for one thing, okay, so first of all, it's a 1989 Chevrolet Camaro IROC Z. I don't even think they called it a Z28 in uh, 1989. It does have a Z28 in badge, uh, badge inside. I'm not sure if that's true or not, uh, because I'm pretty sure this was just an IROC Z, uh, which you get the jokes. Even at the time, the jokes, the jokes, uh, you know, they're, the, the, what do they call it? The Italian retard out cruising or, you know, any number of other things. And yeah, okay, fine. Fair enough. Uh, the IROC wasn't entirely beloved, although it's starting to become so, and we'll get into why. But it was a major car of my youth. It meant a lot to me. It was the third generation F body. My first car was a second gen F body, a 79 Formula Firebird, which I absolutely loved. Uh, but of course, these cars were around. They were expensive at the time. I lusted after them, and uh, I'm kind of enjoying having one now. Um, it was designed by a guy named Jerry Palmer. He didn't do much, but he was the head of design at Chevy for a long time. Uh, actually, he got hired by them in 66 and retired in 02, got a gold watch and all that. Uh, but he did design the third-gen Camaro and F-Body and also the C4 Corvette, 
uh, which uh, gave him access to the Corvette Hall of Fame. So, uh, you know, he has some cred with that. But, I mean, I think he penned an absolute masterpiece in these third generation F bodies. I think they're absolutely beautiful cars. And uh, you really don't need anything more than Knight Rider to sort of back that up. I mean, you know, there's a reason that show took off and it wasn't because everybody loved uh, what's his face. Uh, you know, I can't even remember his name. I know Michael Knight. I can't remember the name of the actor. I think he's drunk. <laughs> His kid filmed him on vodka. I'm like, Chris, this is a normal thing. Uh, what the? Oh my God, am I having a brain fart? It doesn't matter. Anyway, I'm going to put in a text of his name because then I'll remember it after I finish the video. Uh, but we're going to get into how this car came to be, why it's in my wheelhouse and what it's up to. It's arch rival was the Mustang and there were horsepower wars in the 80s. Not really approaching what we have today where, you know, your average Dodge Demon has like 12,000 horsepower. Uh, I mean, this thing had 240 and it was considered pretty big at the time. A Honda Odyssey would probably probably eat its lunch today off the stoplight, but at the time, uh, 240 horsepower was a fairly big deal. Uh, IROC stands for International Race of Champions. Uh, this was a thing that was dreamed up by Roger Penske, uh, who you know, dreamed up all kinds of shit as time went on. Uh, and what it basically did was pit sort of the champions of a variety of different racing series against each other uh, in similar cars to see who could kick each other's ass. And of course, at the time, the cars were these third generation Camaros, but they were basically a body shell bolted on a NASCAR frame. So it really had very little to do with the factory IROC. Uh, later on, IROC became a Dodge thing in the early 90s, uh, although nobody really thinks about it that much. And, you know, there was an IROC Daytona, uh, which I did a review on. I'll put a link to it in there. But, you know, it's kind of one of those forgotten cars of the 90s. When people say I rock now, they think of Camaros, and that's, uh, yeah, that's just the way it goes. But uh, yeah, they ended up on the internet, but it was uh, the wide world of sports, if you remember that thing. There were often the I rock races. I knew a lot about the agony defeat, and I still do. Anyway, uh, my friend Joe at a body shop called me and he said, hey, a friend of mine died. He had this, you know, old Camaro in storage. Do you want it? And I said, well, I'm not sure. I'll come over and look at it. So I did. And there was this sad, tired thing which had been abandoned for even, I guess the guy was sick for a while. It was like three or four or maybe more years. The thing just sat collecting dust. The guy had owned a body shop, so it was full of body shop dust. Maybe it was stored inside. And uh, sitting on four flat tires, barely ran when you added fuel. I mean, barely ran. But it was there, and it was all there. And I thought, man, this could be something. So I negotiated with him. I paid five grand for it, which felt like a lot, honestly, considering the uh, the condition that it was in. But, you know, that was the price I had to pay, so I did. Uh, it was a local car. It was sold new at Bob Taylor Chevrolet back in 89, so that was a plus for me. Uh, it was a one-owner car. This guy had owned it since new, which means absolutely nothing by it. Well, I mean, look, a one-owner car is good. But you have to know who that one owner was. And I mean, if this guy, like this car, you know, treated it like Genghis Khan treated one of his slave girls, what difference does it make? I'd rather have four great owners than one horribly shitty owner. Uh, but this guy, yeah, he was somewhere in between. Uh, the car might have been hit, might have been fake, who knows? It had been painted at least once. Uh, it seemed really tired, but... I looked at it, I looked it up, I thought about it, and I ended up buying it. And if you remember, I had that 89 uh, 300ZX. It might have been an 88. I don't remember anymore. Uh, and I had sort of been fixing that up. I'm one of these guys who sort of likes to have projects going on. At least one car for a project. A long-term thing that I drive and have a bit of fun with. And uh, the 300ZX had been that car. But I had taken it 
almost as far as I wanted to take it. I saw this thing and I thought, man, this is going to be a perfect replacement for that. I sold the 300ZX at the Premier auction. Didn't do nearly as well on it as I hoped I would, but the hell with it, it's gone. And uh, I got to work on this thing, although it's taken much longer than I thought to make it drivable. Uh, but why did I pick it? Why this IROC? Well, first of all, it's in 1989, which is the year that I graduated high school. So, uh, you know, that meant something in some stupid kind of way. Uh, number two, again, car of my youth, IROC Z. You know, I was 16 uh, in 1986, eh, seven, whatever, 85, the IROC came out. Uh, I think the IROCs ran from 85 through 1990. So five years, and they were a pretty big deal, and it seemed like something I'd like. Also, being in 89, uh, it had the 350. Uh, in 87, they started that. They put the L98 engine in them out of the Corvette. And uh, that was, you know, part of the horsepower wars, part of taking it to Ford and the Mustang. Problem was, the car was pretty heavy, and the Mustang still kind of ate its lunch. But, um, eh, you know, it depended on the driver a little bit. 89 it was the last year you could get the 350 with T-tops. Now, I know T-tops aren't exactly the thing race guys want, but I'm looking for a cruiser, so I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, number two, uh, it was, again, the 350, which was like an extra four grand or something over the cost of the 305 or the throttle body that you could get in these things. It's some debate, you know, in 89 there were two hot setups. There was this 5.7, uh, but you could only get it with the automatic. And then there was a 305 uh, that had the five speed. And, you know, probably if I were a race guy, that's what I'd want. But when you're in Naples, city traffic, driving around, cruising, I thought, man, the automatics where it at where it's at. This is what I'm going to end up liking. So, again, another reason that I went with it. '89 they boosted the horsepower up to 240. Uh, you know, a lot for '89. Although that you know Honda Odyssey probably has it beat today. And uh, most IROCs with the uh, 350 had a 277 rear end gear, which is absolutely atrocious. I mean, talk about anti race. But a few like. This one had the optional G92 performance axle package, uh, which gave it a 327 posi traction rear end with disc brakes, and uh, that appealed to me. So, you know, they only made about 1,400 of these things with the performance axle. Out of a, there were 110,000 Camaros roughly made in '89. Of that, like you know, 40,000 or so were V8 models, Camaros, uh, IROX, Z28, that sort of thing. Of those, uh, much, much fewer were 5.7s because it was so expensive. Uh, you add in the T-tops and the performance actual, and you've probably got a car that they made less than a thousand of. So that all appealed to me, and uh, I kind of, yeah, kind of liked it. It added things like a 145 mile an hour speedometer, a 5,500 RPM tack, a 16 inch Goodyear uh, unidirectional GTs, and uh, a few other bits and pieces. So uh, I sold the Datsun, and I got to work on this, and uh, I'm going to go over some of the shit that we do. I'm also going to give away some of the used car secrets, and I'm also going to talk about money, which is something that I rarely do. So give me a minute. I'm going to get my crap together. We're going to dive into this car, and I'm going to give away some of the secrets of the used car world, uh, some of the ways you could refresh a turd and make it into something nice, and uh, why I'm enjoying driving this car around. So bear with me one moment. All right, so the sun's coming out, which is going to screw things up. So let's go over this thing and see where we're at. Uh, number one, you can't deny the attractiveness of the design. Uh, as I like to say, it kind of is a victim of its own success. You know, if they made 10% of these cars that they actually made, it would be extremely exotic looking. You've got this long, low slung front hood. You've got these sort of half covered quad headlamps, which I think look terrific. You've got fogs moving towards the center, big, you know, indicator lights on either side. Uh, it goes into the kind of a hat 
hatchback rear, which I think looks great. Stubby, but not too stubby. You've got a deck lid spoiler back there. Uh, at the time, these 16-inch wheels were actually quite big and respected, even though they'd be small and like the non-optional wheel today. Uh, it's got these segmented taillights. This is something that I'm, you can see they're a little bit tired. And when I got the car, it only had one of them. The other one didn't match and was from a standard Camaro. So I went on eBay and I found a, you know, right hand segmented light, left hand. I don't remember which side I replaced to make a match, but I did. I wanted to get new taillights, but they're like 400 bucks or more. They cost a fortune. Uh, and yeah, God. Yeah, you just have to sort of draw the line. So look, how do you take a car that's a turd and make it into a nice looking driver? Uh, which is what my goal is with this thing. And when I got it, make no mistake, it was a turd. Uh, it had been abandoned, it was tired, uh, it was faded, there was a lot of shit wrong with it. And I thought, well, you know, let's just start making it nice. So here's how you do that if you're in the car business and you've developed, you know, a routine for this sort of thing. Um, number one, you have to throw a lot of money at it. There's no way around that. And I did. You know, the parts are expensive. The paint's expensive. All kinds of shit is expensive. But it doesn't end there. Money isn't enough. You have to have a proper plan. And uh, whether I did or not on this car, well, you could be the judge. So I started first of all by painting the parts on the outside of the car that were kind of fucked up uh, that was the uh, you see the black inserts on the headlights uh, they were faded and very tired so I had our painter Brandon uh, freshen that up a little bit I thought he made them a little too glossy but after I bought a new uh, grill insert down there bumper insert around the fog lights I thought yeah okay they match okay so maybe he did good and I'm gonna zero in on this angle because I took a couple of pictures yesterday. Uh, I only put that Camaro front uh, filler panel in and you can see when I put the pictures in the difference that kind of shit makes. But that part, that resto part was like, you know, close to 300 bucks and you start doing that kind of shit, it adds up. I also replaced all of the headlights. Uh, I pulled off the headlight surrounds and I uh, sandblasted and painted those so that they would look nice again. I replaced that Chevy bag right in the middle of the uh, the front bumper cover uh, because it was old, tired, and faded. And that was like 30, 40 bucks. I replaced these hood vents because they were desiccated. And, uh, you know, now they look nice. But, yeah, again, pretty decent amount of money. Uh, I bought a shorty antenna for it, which I'm not sure about, but, yeah, we'll have it for the moment. Uh, the wheels were absolutely horrible. Uh, that was about 600 bucks, but I sent them out. To, oh, look at that. I missed and one of the black inserts. Dalton put those on for me, and he's kind of moronic, so he obviously didn't tighten one of the black caps. Thank God I've got some extras, so I'll put that back on. Uh, but um, there it is. And I'm getting ahead of myself, because I guess, first of all, let's just put it this way. So you see the picture of the thing on the tow truck getting dropped off at Chris's shop. Uh, it's sitting on shitty... Actually, it had tires at that point because I put those on at Auto House. But long story short, it started with tires because the thing wasn't a roller at all with the tires that it had. So you're talking 600 bucks worth of BF Goodrich tires. They were probably on sale on Tire Rack, which is why I got them. And uh, that's why they're on the car. So boom, they went on the car. Now the thing's a roller. I very quickly found out that when he hit the brakes two times, they locked up. The car couldn't be moved. So it needs to have brake work. It went over to Chris's shop. It got four new calipers, four new rotors, four new, a bunch of new lines. Uh, you know, finally the brakes could work after throwing a bunch of money at him. Uh, he went through the motor, which barely ran. We ended up putting injectors in it, uh, plugs, wires, cap rotor, that sort of thing. And uh, after a lot of work, it actually ran. Then I had to put an AC compressor on it to make the air conditioning cold. But this is the process that I do. So you get this tired car, cosmetically shit, mechanically shit, 
the first thing you have to do is make it a runner driver so you can actually make something out of it. So that's where all the money went at first. Tires, brakes, engine, AC. Uh, it became a driver. And that, you know, so I paid five grand. The tires were another five, six hundred bucks. Uh, I paid Chris three grand to make it into a driver when he had Alvaro the mechanic there. Now I've hired Alvaro the mechanic, but we'll get into all that later. Long story short, now I've got 8,600 in it and the car runs and drives. But it's still cosmetically a piece of shit. So get it back to the shop. Uh, hire Brandon. He paints those headlight things. He fixes a big dent in the fender. Uh, you know, fair enough. The dent, by the way, which happened at Chris's shop because he has some kind of Haitian church there. And apparently Haitian women don't really care that much how they park. So one of them took out my front fender <laughs> and have that fixed. But uh, he did that. He painted... Um, the trim around the rear hatch because that looked a little bit desiccated and tired. Also ended up putting a lot of overspray inside the jams, which I'll have to address later. Uh, these little hatch things that bolt the hatch down, uh, they were rusty and crappy looking, so I had to buy new ones of those, but you know, it worked out. Um, again, the taillight. Uh, you can see like the Z28 badge on the back is kind of screwed up, the IROC badge. We'll get into that when I pop the hood, what I'm gonna do about that. Uh, it's also missing a fair amount of the graphics. And when I got the car, I thought the IROC Z was in the wrong location, which was driving me absolutely insane. Uh, but it turns out for 89, it might actually be right once I get the graphics on there. So anyway, let's uh, have a look in the back and I'll tell you where we're going with that. So get into all that later. Now you can see I put new struts in it so that it actually lifts the hatch when you pop it. Uh, those were fairly expensive but not terrible. Uh, also it has one of these Cadillac style electric pull downs. This thing rises. Man on an old iRocket none of these work. Absolutely none of them. But they did make kits to make them work. Uh, I bought that. Then I found out I had to buy a motor because the motor was crap and uh, Alvaro put it all together and got it working and uh, it's all fine. Uh, in my drivers, I kind of like to have a nice stereo, and in a car like this, as I did with the Datsun, I want it to be period correct. So with some eBay searching, I found a couple of Soundstream amplifiers. These are similar to ones I had at the time in my old Firebird, so I thought that would be fun. Uh, this is a four-channel amp, which is going to run the uh, the front speakers and the 6x9s in the back. This is a two-channel that's going to run the woofers. If I could find one of those Stillwater Design uh, kicker boxes that used to fit perfectly in there, I would, but I don't think I will. I've searched everywhere and can't find them. Uh, and I did find a uh, Alpine pullout with uh, an Alpine EQ, which is going to fit nicely in the one and a half din sized uh, setup that uh, this radio is. Uh, in this box, and I was going to open it, but I'm not going to bother now because I didn't have my knife on me, but it's a Phoenix Graphics. It's an IROC kit that's going to give me all the stripes, all the badges, everything to make this car sort of look like it should uh, because it doesn't have any of those now. Uh, that's been sitting in the car for about a year now, but one of these days soon I'm going to be opening that up and installing it. It also had a cargo cover, which I had to remove because it was uh, kind of screwed up, but I'm going to fix that and get it back in. So. Um, Here's another thing. The car had been sitting for years. It was filthy, dusty, horrifying. There was very little I could do other than take the thing almost completely apart, pressure wash everything, and sort of slowly start putting it back together. I had to order a few of these little uh, things that hold in all the panels. I had to fix panels to make them fit right. And, um, you know, big job. The detail on this car, I couldn't count on Dalton to do it. I had to do it myself. Uh, was a huge job encompassing several weeks. I bought things like these little black caps for the spoiler bolts, which were missing. Uh, this car had been painted kind of poorly over the years. So this red, uh, red had covered this VIN tag, which I used some thinner to get off. I had to sand all the 
points of contact to make this pull down work, which you'll see it does. And uh, again, this is just the kind of shit you have to do beyond throwing money at a car to make it nice. I also found all the uh, lights to make the third brake light work. Oh, there it is, pulling down. Again, that wasn't easy to do. That was a big job to make that work. Uh, I think the guy did a, there's a place called Chips Wheel Repair, and he did a beautiful job on the wheels, but he charged for it. So 600 bucks later, boom, there they are. You can see the discs in the back, part of that performance axle package, nice. Uh, I have not yet fixed the door handles. You can see they're faded and tired, and it kind of gives you an idea of what I was facing with this car, because that is the way almost all the black trim on it looked. Oh god, anyway, let's have a look under the hood, see what we got. Uh, here on the fender, actually this was a screw up from Robert the Polak. He, uh, uh, if you lift these cars up wrong, even though it feels right, what it ends up doing is poking the fender out, which it did on this car. You can see the gap there is wrong. You have to screw around with that to get it back. Uh, Robert used his knee to try and push in the fender and ended up denting the thing. So I had to get a dent guy to come out and fix that. And now I've got to have Brandon come out and fix again this impact strip. And when I had Dalton buff it out, he left compound everywhere, so I've got to work on that. <laughs> it's never ending. But this is one of the reasons I bought the car. Here it is. This is what they used to call the lobster on top of this engine. Uh, you see it's got the runners on either side, and yeah, it kind of looks like a lobster. Uh, if Chris was eating this uh, lobster, it would have a lot of butter with it. Uh, you can see that this um, um, uh, condenser is new with, you know, update, all that AC shit had to get done. New compressor, uh, but the AC is nice and cold. I think I put a uh, radiator in it, but I don't remember. Certainly it got a radiator cap, it got a thermostat, it got the new injectors, and, uh, you know, fair enough. It also got new air cleaners, all this shit. I had to remove everything here and pressure wash it, clean it. I had to clean overspray off these rubber bumpers. Uh, to make it look a little better. Uh, you know, the motor compartment doesn't look fantastic now, but man, you should have seen it when I got it. In comparison, it's like a show car. And while this car is never gonna be super cherry, with enough money and enough elbow grease, you can make it a really nice driver, and that's really what my mission is. So uh, the brakes got done, the engine got done, it now runs pretty great, can't complain. Uh, you know, these headlights, you can see where they've been sort of redone. I try to get rid of as much of the overspray and other shit as I can, and uh, you do what you can to make it a nice driver. I pulled off the hood insulation. I have new stuff to put on, which I haven't yet, but I will. Uh, you can see it has some new bolts there, and of course that was to hold down those new uh, black hood vents. So, you know, there it is. Uh, it's a mixture of throwing money at it and a mixture of getting off off your ass and taking shit apart and cleaning it as best you can and putting it back. And uh, it's lucky enough to still have the catalyst tag to show that it is a true 5.7 uh, IROC, which, you know, Maybe it's going to mean something someday. It doesn't mean much today, but down the road, yeah, maybe. Who knows? So I tell you what, I'm going to pause there for a minute. Um, I'm not going to take the T-tops off. I'm going to put the GoPros on because I'm kind of enjoying those views. And uh, then we're going to hop in, look at the inside, and go for a spin. So bear with me one moment. All right, so I've pulled it up a little bit to try and get out of the sun, at least on the inside, because the sun just screws up everything, but uh, we're gonna keep going. See, I've got the Audi Europa plate on the back, just kind of an old time sake thing. Thought the hell with it, why not? <laughs> Maybe I'll get some kind of tag frame that says I love my IROC down the road, but uh, for the moment, that's what we got. And uh, I can't wait to get all the graphics on it and stuff, but we're going to have to have Dalton do another big wet sand and buff before that happens, so... Yeah, we'll work on it. And of course, I've got the GoPro set up because I'm kind of enjoying having the views from those. And I do like the T-tops on this car. Again, not, you know, there was an option you could get. If you ordered the five-speed TPI and 
uh, it took the optional no air conditioning and automatically triggered a one LE a triggered that's a great word for today uh, a one LE package which would give it boosted suspension and some other shit which made it kind of a showroom stock racer for SCCA and those are probably the top dog IROCs uh, you know at least from 1989 I would call this second place because it's more of a Cadillac IROC with the 5.7 the automatic uh, it's got the uh, TH-700 uh, uh, tranny <sighs> transmission with that L98 Corvette engine which uh, first went in in uh, 1987 so um, yeah, you know, to me it's great, but uh, there is a uh, more hot roddy package. And inarguably, the 305 with the five speed is more racy, but it's less fun in Naples to shift that thing through the gears, you know? How are you going to balance a cigarette and uh, some edibles and a whiskey and whatever else while you're trying to drive around and do what you need to do? So, anyway, let, let's have a look inside this thing. Now, the interior of this car was an absolute shambles. It was a mess, and it's still not great, but it's a lot better, and it's certainly drivable now. Uh, it's a GM flame red outside, which is a great color, a little bit of an average paint job. Inside is also red, which I think looks pretty good and made me happy. But it was filthy. The seats were filthy. There was mold. Uh, everything was tired, covered in body shop dust. The steering wheel was melting. I had to replace that, which we'll get into. And uh, all kinds of other shit that was going on. Um, so what I basically did was strip the interior. I took as much out of it as I could. I pressure washed the seats. I had to rebuild the seat motors. Uh, I had to pay our mechanic a shitload for that. Um, and then I went through and sort of did all of the plastic trim as best I could uh, with cleaning and the air guns and whatever else to make it nice. And of course threw more money at it. So uh, by the time I was done with the outside, we were talking to and the mechanicals, uh, you know, what did I have five grand in the car, 500 in the tires, that's 5,500, three grand uh, in the mechanical overhaul, so now we're at 8,500. Uh, wheels were 600, now we're at 9,100, and, uh, you know, maybe another grand worth of bits, pieces, other bullshit. Uh, figure I got about 10 grand plus in this car, and it's probably about what it's worth, but... Anyway, we'll get into that. So the door panels, they got pressure washed. Everything got pressure washed in this car with the exception of the dashboard because you couldn't. That would become big problems. Uh, yeah, all right, look, I'll get into it as we go. First of all, let's have a look at this. This is loose. That's great to tighten that up. But anyway, you can see where I fucked up the pressure washing there in the back, that big red spot on the seat. I got too close. Uh, but other way, and there were cigarette burns, which are not mine. That came from the guy who owned the car before. I've got my Haynes manual back there to help me out with any little bits of shit I need. I have not yet done the headliner. You can see these door panel, kicker panel things are still faded. You, you, I don't know what color that is, camel dung, but they have to be recovered in red as does the headliner, and uh, I have to also get the window tint off the T-tops. I got it off the rest of the car. It was a nightmare job. Uh, I'll set a picture of that up now. I did that all day yesterday, breathing in ammonia, uh, knowing that if Dalton did it, he would do a shit job doing it. But every panel got severely cleaned, if not removed, uh, air gunned out, blown out. You know, this is the shit you have to do on top of the money. Uh, uh, if you're going to have a decent driver. And look, if you want a show car, if you want a 10 out of 10, if you want something that's incredibly cheery, don't start with a car like this. Uh, it's not going to happen unless you spend billions of dollars. Uh, you have to temper your expectations like you do when you're moving in with a woman. You know, I mean, it's not going to go the way you exactly planned, and it's not going to be who you thought it was. So um, I just wanted to end up with a nice driver. These were my expectations, and I think I can reach that. Uh, to have a show car, forget it. You just can't come up with enough money or labor or time or people to do that. Uh, you just better buy one in that condition to begin with. But uh, 
anyway, we got in here. These are new lock and unlock buttons. It's a new mirror switch. I had to get new door panel um, armrests because these were all exploded. They're not quite the right ones, but they're good enough. Uh, I bought a interior screw kit, uh, which gives you like, you know, these... Um, uh, door sill screws, dash screws, all kinds of shit like that. Uh, you can see this uh, seat is a little bit melted still, a little bit faded. I don't know what I'm going to do with that, if anything. I may just leave it the way it is, or I may try and find something to fix it. Uh, it's got a Camaro... Uh, badge, I don't know what you call it, you know, sewn in graphic over on the right seat. Doesn't have one on this seat, which tells me that the owner before me had the seat redone at some point, um, which, you know, looks fine and good enough for me. Uh, also a power seat because this is something of a Cadillac more than a sports car. Uh, the carpet is tired. I have an old gray floor mat for the moment I'm using. It's in the back. I've ordered cocoa mats for it. I thought about about putting carpet in it, but you know, where do you stop? You just have to sort of draw the line somewhere, and that's what I've done. So, all right, let's hop in and see what we got. There's the way that door closes. Let's fire this thing up. It has a very nice rumble because it has that performance uh, uh, axle package. It gives you some kind of dual converter exhaust, which has a lovely rumble to it. Kind of all bark and no bite. Actually, let me walk around to the back so you can hear that. It sounds quite nice, especially because it's probably a little bit worn out now. Yeah, I like the sound of that. All right, and let's look at what we got here. So we've got this big overhang of a dash. I cleaned that off finally yesterday. It was kind of gray and tired looking, uh, but actually the dash pad's in pretty nice shape. Uh, you've got, it's sort of a big uh, multi-gauge instrument cluster, which uh, again, you get the 55 mile or 5,500 RPM tack with the performance axle. You get the 145 mile an hour speedo. Uh, odometer is working. Thing must have 105 on it, uh, at least according to the car facts, which is fine. Uh, trip does not work. Odometer does work. You got your temp gauge, you got your fuel gauge, and your voltmeter. Uh, I had to put in a new light switch because it was all screwed up. You'd turn the interior lights on and they wouldn't work. Now they're not working now. Look at this. Oh, that's wonderful. And there they come on. Uh, anyway, the interior <laughs> lights are now working. Um, and I had to put new bulbs in these map lights here to make them work. Uh, new switch, whatever else up here to make that all good. Uh, I had to blow out these vents. They were covered with body shop dust. They look gross. Uh, this has a tilt wheel, which is nice. Works good for me. I had to replace the steering wheel. Because, man, these things are unobtainium. I was very lucky to find this one in Canada. Speaking of which, your Canadians are going to be pretty miserable back there. But uh, And then I got our seat guy who comes in and fixes up seats to come in and fill whatever tired shit was on the steering wheel and repaint it in black or re-dye it. So that's why it looks so nice. And then I detailed the rest of it, uh, you know, scrubbing around the badge and whatnot to really make it look nice. These are the things you have to do. Uh, I put in a new multi-switch here because all of the hieroglyphics were faded, gone completely. It was just a black switch. Couldn't see anything on it uh, to make it, and it didn't work well. So new one of these was fairly cheap and it was easy to install. Uh, uh, over here, the uh, AC works well. I'll turn that on now. Uh, didn't have to do anything to that other than clean it. I did have to put a new cigarette lighter in, which uh, doesn't seem to work very well, but at least it looks good. Uh, the little sir, all this shit was rusted on the original one, uh, so I had to find one from uh, eBay that uh, would fix it. Um, the stereo actually works. The, uh, Although I only get it on the left channel. Uh, it's extended range sound, as you can see, which is terrific. But yeah, it doesn't mean much when you got one channel. Uh, you got an EQ, you got a tape deck. I'm using a tape uh, 
whatever the hell you call it, adapter to run my phone through it. I've got it faded to the rear because it sounds a lot better than the front. And I could send that out and have it fixed and keep it all factory, but I think there's something cool about having that period correct Alpine and EQ in there, which is exactly how I would have owned it if I had it at the time. Uh, down low, you can see there's an under dash panel that's the little white foam from it. That was missing completely. I had to order that and get that on there. And that's where all this little bits and pieces shit kind of adds up. I had to order new uh, sun visors because they were destroyed. Uh, you can see they're on that faded headliner panel, but that's going to be replaced soon. And uh, we'll see where we're at there. So uh, I'd say about 60% done with the car, but I'm getting there. Uh, the ashtray required a lot of cleaning. I had to put a new shift knob on it. That was another 60 bucks. Uh, I had to close a clean up and have our seat guy touch up the e-brake thing, which was tired. Uh, these switches were all worn off where you couldn't see any of the hieroglyphics on them. Looked terrible. Three new switches, another 100 bucks. I installed them myself. Uh, the center console armrest cover, a little screwed up in the front, but overall pretty good, and I think I'm just going to leave it. Uh, you get in here, I've got my work phone and my cassette adapter. That's what I'm using for music. Did not come with an owner's manual, so I found one of these on eBay. Uh, which is, you know, again, period correct enough, 89 owner's manual, uh, what you need, and it's part of what makes the car look kind of nice and original, and one of these little dealer tricks you do is to try to make the thing look as complete as you can. Uh, and here is the original build sheet, which is kind of neat. It'll tell you that it's got the 350, the performance axle, and some other shit, which someday may make this car worth a little bit more than, you know, a standard 305 automatic IROC. All that said, let's go for a spin. Automatic overdrive. You wouldn't think this was the kind of shit they'd brag about in a performance car. I mean, what makes it automatic? Who gives a shit? Honestly. Yeah, okay, so it's automatic. It goes into overdrive on its own. Wonderful. <sighs> Part of the other thing is, man, you got, like, I haven't pulled the instrument cluster yet. I'm going to clean everything up. I may replace the plastic glass. I have to change the lighting because none of the three center gauges are working. It's those little things that make cars nicer. But again, if you want one that's mint, you better buy it that way because it's going to be very expensive and very hard to do it um, to make a car a 10 out of 10 that's, you know, in tired condition to begin with. Peter's watering the water in the street. I'm going to wait for a second. I don't go around there. <laughs> Alright, so we got a little wheel spin coming out, which is great. Wouldn't have done it with that uh, non-performance axle. The reason you can actually see out the windshield is because I did it and Dalton didn't. I did it yesterday when I removed the tent. And, you know, man, here I am. I'm kind of in this laid-back driving position, which you get in these F-bodies. I can hear it's got some kind of a air leak up. It could either be the T-tops or it could be the windshield. I don't know yet. I'm going to have to figure that out. But uh, otherwise, man, the... I feel like being a kid again. I mean, when I worked at the Cadillac dealership back in 1990, they took one of these in on trade, and the used car manager, my boss, a guy named Marcel, very nice guy, uh, he said, man, I don't have anything to do with you today. We had take the IROC, go out and cruise, have a bit of fun. And that was an 89 IROC 5.7 in red. And uh, I did. I spent half the day cruising it around. I went to the little community college that I attended at the time. Tried to pick up a broad who, you know, had very little to do with me, but I tried. And um, and it was fun. And, and reliving that now is... Yeah, I see. I couldn't beat that guy. Reliving that now is... God, it just light up the rears. The posi traction. Love it although it's still slow. Uh, and there it is. And I'm reliving my youth. I'm having fun. I'm enjoying myself. <sighs> this is why I do these little projects. So, uh, again, I'm about 60% done on this thing. I have a lot more to do. Uh, I'll do the video at the end of it, a true full-on review uh, of a third-gen F-Body iRock Z with the 5.7. Uh, but that's probably a few months out at best. 
and uh, in the meantime I'm going to enjoy myself making it the car that you know I think it is so it's gone from being this forgotten tired turd uh, to being a respectable driver and uh, that has taken a fair amount of money and a ton of labor and um, you know making sure that you started with decent raw material if the car was too far gone it really doesn't matter what you throw at it it's always going to be a turd I've moved this one from a turd to a decent driver I'll make it a little bit nicer than that before I'm done but again if you want the mint in the wrapper perfect one eh, you better buy it that way to begin with because there just isn't enough money out there to do it with a car like this thank you very much for having a look appreciate it i'm gonna let the gopros do their work throw in a little bit of driving video and uh we will see you with the next one take care